So in this video, I'm going to be examining just how far you can overclock a Pentium G4520 and whether or not that overclock would then make it worth it for you to go for a Z170 board over a standard B150 or H whatever um, other chipsets that are available on motherboards. So we're going to go ahead and examine, go into the BIOS and start overclocking this Pentium chip. So straight away in my MSI Z170A gaming crate BIOS, uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're in advanced mode, which you can change with F7, but then go on into overclocking settings and make sure that if you go up to the top, let me go back up there, you can you set the OC Explorer mode to expert and the beta runner to NOC, which allows you then to be able to change the CPU base clock, which modifies both the RAM speed as well as the base clock which is then multiplied by the CPU ratio. So I'm actually having a bit of trouble with the BIOS that is currently installed. It won't let me go above 108.34 megahertz for the base clock even though on my Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon I was easily able to get it up to at least 130. So I need to go ahead and reflash a different BIOS to see if it's um, to see if I can unlock that base clock a little bit more because 108.34 isn't exactly what I'm looking for here. Okay, so my first order of business, uh, I'm just going to actually try and check out a newer BIOS from MSI directly um, since this one was last updated uh, in May. The newest one was updated in July, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can flash to that BIOS and if it'll allow me to upgrade the BCLK just above 108. Because the Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon that I was using previously allowed me to get it up to 130 and that was on a default MSI BIOS. So just going to change that and see what I can do here. There we go. Uh, yes, that one. That one. That one. Yes. Okay, BIOS is updating. Now you're going to work for me, right? Now you're going to actually allow me to upgrade the BCLK, hey? Huh? Are you going to do a little motherboard? Are you going to allow me to upgrade the BCLK, hey? Advanced mode, OC, experts, NOC, okay, that's fine, I don't care. Um, and then 125. Oh, come on! 108.34. Okay, um, well, instead of going up to a newer BIOS, let's see if I can roll back to a lesser BIOS and get that to work, because 108.34, I mean, that's a 300 megahertz increase. That's not at all good enough for what I'm trying to do here. All right, it appears that this revision of the BIOS, which was released in January of this year, does allow me to... Uh, run the BCLK up to 125. Uh, let's see if it has any limit. Nope, uh, 200. Okay, yeah, it doesn't have any limit here. So I'm gonna try 125 because that should be pretty safe. Uh, I'm gonna set the memory to nothing that high, probably around 26. Um, that should be fine. And then I'm gonna set the voltage to just like 1.35 because that should be pretty safe. Um, all of this looks pretty good. Uh, doing this for an initial boot and then uh, if if there's more wiggle room, I will definitely start overclocking a bit higher to see what we can get it up to. So, and she turned off. Failed the overclock. Let's try and boot that. Just changing some voltage around, setting an XMP profile, which I'm not sure would actually make any difference whatsoever. I don't know. Nope, she died. What exactly is going on here? Okay, so it appears that the overclock failed and it just didn't tell me because we're running at 100 BCLK. Um, the memory is running at 2133. I did notice that it didn't have me set the beta runner to NOC. So I'm actually not sure if uh, this BIOS doesn't have what we need. So, so after going through as many different BIOSes as I could and then swapping different chips out, putting in the i3-6100 instead of the Pentium, I discovered that the motherboard on the latest revision of the BIOS will only allow you to push non-K chips to 3.9 gigahertz. So even the 6100 or anything above that will not go above 3.9 gigahertz, but that is slightly better than what I was getting on any of the other BIOSes because even if I push the base clock up to 101 megahertz instead of the 100, it wouldn't boot at all. So. 
I think it's just the motherboard. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's on a motherboard by motherboard basis and MSI artificially limited the uh, the top amount of the base clock that you could possibly get on the Z170A Crate Gaming 3X motherboard. So we are sitting at a 108.35 base clock, which means it's an 8.3% overclock on the Pentium G4520 since 100 megahertz to 108 megahertz, that's 8%. So I think what's appropriate to do now is to go ahead and open up some benchmarks and see if there is a significant increase, at least I would say 5% in the, in the benchmarking because one of the main issues with benchmarking on a Pentium is that your CPU limited basically all of the time. Okay, first up we're gonna check out and see how Grand Theft Auto 5 behaves. I've already got the settings set up the way that I want to, so I'm just going to go ahead and run the benchmark and we'll compare it to how the Pentium performs at stock speeds. So if we look at the previous average FPS that we had uh, on Grand Theft Auto at 1080p with the G4520 at stock speeds, we had 70.254. So let's go ahead and pull up what we had this time. So that 75 FPS is basically an average of all of these five, so I need to pull up the calculator in order to be able to do this. 71.407, 70.254, so let's subtract 70.254, divide that by 70.254, and we see that we have an increase of less than 2% with Grand Theft Auto V, which is not spectacular for an 8% overclock on the CPU. So, um, let's go ahead and pull up another benchmark. This time let's do Rise of the Tomb Raider and see what kind of increase we can expect. Okay, so the average FPS here was 105.69, which is actually really respectable because if we look at what I got with the G4520 at stock speeds at 1080p, it was 71.54. So that's an increase of nearly 50% off of basically just overclocking at 8%. So I think what happened there was it actually released uh, the CPU throttling quite a bit. So even look, taking a look at CPU usage during the benchmark itself, it's still pegged at 100% but it's been freeing up the GPU to actually use more of what its potential is. Because if we look at what it got with the 6700K, it was actually, oh, that's way too big. It was actually 118 FPS, which is still significantly higher than what we just received, although it's better than what we got there. So the 40% deficit was actually cut off here pretty significantly in DirectX 11. So let's move on to one last benchmark just before we call this experiment quits let's see uh hitman and direct x11 so we're looking for a 43.21 fps average at 1080p now the average fps here is 40.29 with the previous average being 43.21 which tells me that this did not help at all. So I guess we could talk about the conclusion here. I think it's a really variable option as to whether or not overclocking your Pentium is gonna be worth it for you. I mean, my MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon was actually able to push the CPU a bit higher than this current Crate Gaming 3X motherboard is allowing it to go, but that makes sense since BCLK overclocking isn't officially supported, so why would MSI allow it to be unlocked on all of the boards? I would prefer if it was, and therefore I could have tested this a bit further as to how far you can push a Pentium, but unfortunately that's not what happened in today's video. Rather, I got an 8% overclock with, you know, 35% increase in some games, 0% increase in others, and a loss in another. So, it really comes out to be a crapshoot. I mean, the Pentium, if you look at the Grand Theft Auto V footage, like, it's still micro stuttering all over the place. It's not at all a good situation to be in playing with a Pentium. And of course, this is like best case scenario. I'm using a GTX 1080 on my test bench to actually be able to even play this game and it's still not able to handle it. So would it be worth it to overclock your Pentium? I would say yes, because honestly, you're probably not gonna draw too many more thermals. You don't really need to raise the voltage on it, especially if you're only pushing it up 8%, but even at a 20% overclock with a 120 megahertz 
base clock, I think you only need to put the voltage to like 1.325 or 1.35, perfectly in normal range, and then you'd be able to push it up to 4.5 gigahertz, which likely will not help you for gaming, but would help you with CPU bound tasks, but who's buying a Pentium with a Z170 board anyways? Take this for what it's worth, I'm sh not sure it's entirely a good conclusion. I had a Z170 board, I had a Pentium processor, put them together with a GTX 1080 just because I can, and these are the results. Overclocking your Pentium will not yield a whole lot. So that's it for this video, guys. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked, you disagree with me or how I went about this, or if you know of a way that I can get more than an 8% overclock on my Pentium, please, if you have that information, leave it down in the comments because I would really love to know because I spent, I think, three hours trying to figure out how I could get over more than that 108 megahertz on the base clock. Regardless, you can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content, including a full comprehensive detailed list of how each new modern graphics card performs with the Pentium G4520. I went ahead and benchmarked all of those, so that will be coming out shortly, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.